I would like to welcome you to Palimpsest, Layers of Discovery. We are seven artists. We're waiting for Cheryl because she's in Australia and it's very early there. <laughs> so we're hoping that she gets her pajamas on <laughs> and uh, joins us as soon as she can. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the artists. Denise is our technician and she makes these incredible paintings, but she's also an <laughs> Um, amazingly skilled photographer and she suffers from wanderlust so <laughs> she travels everywhere um julie is our incredible mentor in how to be an artist who gets her shit together and she also <laughs> shares her love of the ocean and the sky to like touch your heart laura is our international over the side on that side italian but in the uk mom who has very active children apparently and yeah. she, <laughs> lara manages to balance that with her creative soulful portraits of women that celebrate their strengths stephanie is in toronto and she's a performer and celebrates music in her paintings, but she also is a mom and does a commercial graphics career like obut, <laughs> which is a French term. <laughs> and uh, she makes it happen, okay? <laughs> Cheryl, welcome. We're so glad you were able to join us. <laughs> I just got up. <laughs> So I'll, seriously. I'll give you a moment to get your mind together. And it, I, I was just, you know, putting my earrings on. I was watching the sunlight on the trees outside. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say about you, because you're <laughs> not just an incredible painter and teacher, but you are a naturalist. And in your paintings, you do um, celebrate the natural world and look at that you were like distracted by watching sunlight so it's so genuine and uh, and ross c berman in la california is our subject today for the interview and he is a an artist who had a graphics career and design career and now he focuses on art that celebrates and explores our spiritual and soulful sides. So I would also at this juncture, oh, myself, forgot me. I'm Rose L. Williams and I'm in Vancouver. I make art out of the leaves that I foraged because I was out walking um, in a park or um, basically anywhere because I live in downtown East Side and I still forage here with anything. <laughs> so I make art from leaves and um, I paint and I'm <clears throat> textiles. So I also wanted to share with you guys this lovely comment that we received from our last um, broadcast from Diane Eagle. And she says, such an interesting project, so challenging, even at the most basic level of materials. Uh, it would be hard enough harmonizing styles, even if everyone used the same medium. Hopefully you will get more viewers as you go. And that is one of the things that Ross is gonna talk about because we are not using the same medium. And he uses pastels which is very um, delicate. Yes, Denise. I want to interject. We have a small, slight technical uh, glitch where uh, <laughs> it's not being live streamed out to all of our pages. It's just on Julie's page. So yeah, if I, can, I, I, I just, see. Yeah, I just I posted that the that link uh, to the uh -huh. live into the chat. Uh, so if you can just go to your Facebook pages and share that there so people who want to see us can still see us uh, there so we, 
We are you have to copy streams. Yes, you can just copy okay, that copy link the, that I just the link. Yes. Sorry for the interruption. And sorry well, for the glitch. Julie and I will fix this next week. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, Thank you. I uh, not sure what I'm copying, but um, Denise, we copy it into where? Sorry, where do we copy it into? Just, uh, just copy the link and then share it in your Facebook page. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's giving me a hard time to copy. It wants to just take me there. <laughs> There's also a, the same link I also posted in the Messenger app, if, it's, if that is easier. Uh, yeah, that's where I am, but I'm not able mm. to copy it. Yeah. Uh, it's just taking me to the page. So. Um, yeah. Can I do it for you? We appreciate uh, it's just taking me to the page. So, uh, okay, oh, somebody has their, their uh, feed open, so please close that. Yeah, that was just mine. Okay, so at least we're live on Julie's page and we want to get continue on because we're really interested today in um, interviewing Ross because he has this uh, very unique approach to making his beautiful art. Um, Ross, would you like to introduce like something that, you know, what's going on in your art? Thank you, Rose. Thank you. What a nice introduction. Um, so briefly, what I'm attempting to do is to use a Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is chai, and that's that kind of guttural sound. It's not the Indian tea drink, chai, C-H, chai. It's this other kind of, uh, I can't remember what that's called. It's a frictive guttural, I guess. Stephanie would probably know all the words for all that stuff. She's a vocalist, but. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it's the uh, sound. That's it. Or like when you, say, when you say the musician Bach, it has that kind of, <laughs> or if you're trying to, you know, get up cat hair. That, but really what the word means is life. And there are different variations on that word life, like pluralizing it or changing its tense or something, but that's the root of it. These two letters, it's just two letters. And uh, you, okay, so you might've heard Lachaim in Fiddler on the Roof, and that's a, a common kind of a toast. It kind of comes from a Jewish cultural background. It doesn't have particular religious significance in itself, what it does have is cu um, cultural significance. It's sort of more from, um, from a, a cultural place. Maybe you've seen, oftentimes it's a man wearing a necklace with a little, um, the two, the symbol for high, these two letters on a chain around the neck. It's metal usually, sometimes it's other materials too. Um, uh, quite a few years ago, I started focusing on this as the motif that I want to explore. I'm not particularly religious. I certainly wasn't when I started my project. I didn't really have a, a Jewish practice. I had explored a lot of practices. That's sort of my métier is that I explore. I'll explore all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, I kind of have a thing with um, a thing. Sounds like the wrong kind of word, but um, and relationship isn't the right word either, but with, with, with Mary, like I have a, a sense of understanding or a simpatico, maybe there's something that I feel very touched by that is so not part of my tradition. I, so, so I don't have a, a worshipful perspective, but what I do have is a perspective that's really born out of my own mess. <laughs> <laughs> In Yiddish, you might say, Chazarai, my own sorus, my own pain, where I, one day, many, many years ago, I was just at, the, at, the, at a very, very low place, and I opened up my Bible, and I turned to Psalms, and I was inspired to just start singing these words. It's not really something I'd ever done before, and I had such a feeling come over me, um, it was really the only the only other time I had that those feelings were like doing you know long sitting meditations and other kinds of deep consciousness kind of work. But this was very very fast for me and very true. 
And by true, I mean, it was an alignment of my beliefs and my experience. So I just started playing around with these two words and I had, I had kept um, um, a visual journal or a sketchbook, if you will, of the, these two letters. And they, I just started to see what I could do with it. I'm not a scribe, which is an honored Jewish tradition to, to scribe using like a, a, a very strict calligraphic kind of style. And that's not where I come from either. I trained as an illustrator. As Rose had mentioned, I was a graphic designer for a long time. I was very into natural foods and helping natural foods grow and see it in households across the country, if not the world. Had some wonderful, wonderful successes with it. And I was empty, 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 empty. So when, when I had this sensation or this experience with this letter form that I could connect in a way that was from my heritage, but non-denominational. And then I could also see how other people might respond to it too. Now, I gotta say that this has gotta be some kind of risk involved in outing yourself as a Jewish person in the world and, um, and, and putting something out there in Hebrew comes with its own, its own risks. And sometimes I have to address that in my work. Sometimes I have to address things that are terribly uncomfortable for me in my work. And I will often, um, without going too much into my process right now, start with, uh, with the two letters and then just build on that and see where it goes. And if I'm using paint, which I do sometimes use paint, but they're all water soluble. I also use pastel, as Rose had mentioned, and color pencil. They're really very, um, low-tech kind of paints and not oil paints or acrylics, although I've used those, but there's something just so, I don't know, like kind of like free and immediate and frankly, you know, inexpensive <laughs> to use these kinds of materials. There's, there's a very low bar. If I don't like something, I can throw it away um, or I can cut it up in a way that I couldn't do if it was canvas. Um, and, and, and rework things. That, those materials require a different kind of reworking than the kind of reworking that I do. Um, so from my drawings, from my tiny sketch, sometimes they are literally that big, which makes my wife crazy. She's like, how can you see what you're doing? It's like, I know exactly what I'm doing. But then I'll also, um, I will might maybe make them larger. I'll make a larger drawing with a brush and ink. I'll scan them, I'll handle them digitally, or I'll handle them with the pastel and color pencil and scan them and then do something else digitally to them. And um, um, at some point in te our, our technological age, that became a benefit for me rather than a, a deficit because there's a way to print things. And uh, you know people are doing all kinds of digital things now that they couldn't do before. And there's access to all of these materials and it becomes a different kind of thing, not NFTs. I'm dead set against NFTs. That's time for another, that's a different story. But um, mm. if there's anything, have I missed anything? What do I have? Do I elicit any questions or um, I got a little more to say about all kinds of things. So maybe you want to ask me something. That was fabulous. And I'm interested to, to explore how you just said that you kind of mix your um, uh, inspirations and your pieces material wise, like the scanning and the cutting up and the, I mean, in a sense, you're already doing something that's about layering. And I'm interested to know how you feel about this layers of discovery, mixing it up with other people's materials. Oh, wow. Honestly, I hadn't even considered that part of what I'm doing is so similar, so similar in a way, or at least in the same, on the same table as what we're doing together. It hadn't even crossed my mind. So, <laughs> wow, right? Um, and okay. Um, I, I know I'm not the only artist who have ever experienced like just being in their own head all the time. And it's a kind of, it can be very lonely to go to your studio and do your work and keep doing your work and do, nobody sees it. You don't show it to anybody. 
So when we all met, this became like, uh, um, well, at first it became like, like just fun because I think it was at the beginning of the pandemic that we all met online. Although I don't mm. actually remember. Halfway what. through. Halfway through. Halfway through. Yeah. Halfway through. Um, and uh, so it was so, it, it became so clear to see the gifts that each of us has. And it was that point, these gifts that each of us has that, that I think it was Stephanie and Denise had said, you know, we could do this thing. And it became such a, a, a really beautiful open door for us all to go through at the same time at different parts of the world. Like, how does that ever happen? <laughs> uh, and, and that we could, we could explore this transformational time and this transformational work outside of, for me, outside of the confines of my own work practice, ideation, that, um, you know, like I got something that Laura had worked on that Rose, you had added on. And I've been looking at it, I think now for, for I, I, I unboxed it last week. So I've really been looking at it every day for probably an hour every day and thinking, wh what could I add to this that would be meaningful? And, and I've had, you know, plenty of ideas and do any of them strike me? Mm, no, not really, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I know something will because because the the foundation is so real and true. And uh, um, just to describe it, it's it's um, uh, Laura had painted a portrait in black and white using her daughter as the model. In that, her daughter is a young woman who's growing up now. So transformational time and in growing, transforming her own self. And then Rose had pasted, or I don't know if that's the right word, pasted, that's the, the, the loose word for it. Collage. Collage, thank you, that's the proper word. Um, a, a, a print using her natural techniques in, in a, a kind of a cartouche or frame that, that, that it, it shows such care for the work that Laura had done. And also talks to this transformational idea like this intention that that we're creating something that will both illustrate and illustrate and um a blank word <laughs> put put forward something transformational like something that somebody else could see and and maybe if they're tuned in they'll feel it too that's where they're all coming from like something that somebody else could see and, oh. and maybe if they're tuned in or YouTube. Who has their, anybody has their Facebook open? Yeah. Mm. Gotta close that. Sorry, Ross. Might that was, you're all this is fascinating. So nobody in, don't it don't interrupt them again. <laughs> Please continue. That was really interesting. Oh, I think I think I had said everything I needed to say in the, okay, in great. the, the interruption was so, well well served. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. That that was fascinating. Uh, I was like, mm. <laughs> so on that note, I think I would like to ask Lara, because we you're talking about the piece that we worked on together, uh, if she has any questions for Ross. Uh, yeah, I prepared two questions, but uh, actually he, in, in some way, he answered before. I am... Um, uh, I would like to know how do you proceed? Uh, how is your creative process? Uh, so, uh, if you um, you said that you start to to draw, you start to to to, um, to write the two letters, and then you put something. Um, but uh, there is something that push you at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, an idea. Yeah, uh, you talk about the life, but there is because I've seen in your website. Uh, um your your art and i can find sometimes uh, there is like joy um uh, and sometimes frustration uh, sometimes there is like uh, you are searching and uh, sometimes uh, i can feel peace and sometimes uh, like trouble so i don't know uh, if there is something that uh, um make uh, make you 
the, 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 the light uh, at the beginning, then put you on the path to, for your creation. I don't know if I Hope, yes. was able and, uh, to express my question. That's a beautiful question, Laura. I have, I have to, I just had to have to consider it for a moment first. Um, I think I want to do the Guggenheim approach. In my family, we call going to the museum and at the top and going down the Guggenheim approach. Um, so um, the the idea that some of my work has pain in it, like I haven't even really shown the really painful stuff. And part of that is because um, I, I, I find it hard to um, maybe justify, like why would I put something out in the world that I'm saying is to raise spirits and like, oh, here's this like really super painful idea we're feeling that I'm attempting to, to like, um, oh, Rose used the word corral, I think that's a great word, um, to corral into this piece. Um, <clears throat> for most of my artistic life, since I was really very, very young, I've had, our, the biggest challenge for me has been balancing the product and the process. And that might be true for a lot of, a lot of artists too. And whereas explicitly my work is about a product, it's like, just like a jewel thing. Now I can't wear metal around my neck. So I said, well, how am I gonna do this if I, I'm not making jewelry? I'm like, I want something I can hold warmly to my skin. This, this is talking to that. So there's a sense in what I'm doing um, that um, really comes out of my own personal cloaking, cloaking, uh, embrace or, or or emitting or empathizing with some point that I want to touch about life about life so for instance th in the past few years I know a lot of us have had this I've had quite a few friends pass away yeah so I've needed to make are in about that and some of them have come out like really like there's a high here and it came out and it, and it came to me like because because i've been doing this for for years now i literally see the letters in tandem everywhere in the barks of trees in the cracks in the ground in your hair i mean i can really see i can look at the constellations and i will find them so there's something very universalistic I, I got to say about that, because I think that that's, you know, with intent and direction, isn't this how people in one part of the world have found the other part of the world? They've created a pattern in those stars and then decided to go there. So there's something in that. And then there's something about my own theology, which I really want to make succinct and um, um, not weird. Um, and then how I, how, in all the different ways I've arrived there as well. Um, and, and, and one of those points is, and this comes out of my work with the Jewish Studio process, which is um, a, a process I also facilitate in workshops and professional development. And um, one of the foundational ideas is that God is process. And if I consider that, rather than God is love, God is everything, or sometimes, you know, in a more Buddhist kind of sense, it's not really God, but you could kind of frame it this way, God is nothing, but that God is process, it really encompasses something in a, in a Jewish sphere that also has roots. And those roots are the burning bush where, where God tells Moses in the desert, um, you know, God, uh, Moshe asks, Moses asks, what, what's your, What's, what should I call you? What's your name? And God's answer is, I am what I am, is how it's usually interpreted in many translations, but can also be interpreted as I will be what I will be. In other words, I am the process that things unfold to be. Can I interrupt you there, Ross? Please, I'll start my dissertation in a minute. <laughs> no, I, I, it's only because our clock, because this is, your, your work is deep. And your work is meaningful, 
And not just to you, I just want to reflect that back to you. It's not meaningful only to you. It, it touches other people as well. And, um, you know, death is part of life. And the word you're working with means life. Hmm. So I think it's, it's really genuine that you reflect all parts of life because you have a lot of joyful pieces as well. Um, I'm only interrupting because it's, 1228 and we're supposed to be done at 1230 so <laughs> that's the only reason because uh I think that you've started a discussion that would be useful to develop further so I would like to continue this discussion absolutely because we didn't have enough time to explore and we didn't have enough time for everyone to ask their questions so um I really um if, does anyone have a question that would be done in like a minute? Can I put a plug in? Yes. I, have, I have another live art show. It's my own live art show on Monday. I've, wow. This is the first, that will be the second. It's like, wow, and all in one weekend. Where is that, on, online? On, online, on Facebook also, yeah. Oh, cool. So what, what time and when do we tune in? Monday at... Four o'clock Pacific. Four o'clock Pacific on your Facebook page. On my High Life Gallery page, yeah. On your High Life Gallery page. Okay, great. And I would like to also mention that Julie has done the work and she has this great new site called Painting with Julie Brayton, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. And I'm already thinking of people that I'm going to suggest to take her course because I, I think it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and uh, if anybody's looking for somebody to um, mentor them in um, painting techniques that are solid and, and really useful, look, at, look for Julie and join us next week because we will continue this discussion. And we're really happy that you joined us and uh, took the time to uh, listen to what we're talking about. I really appreciate the time and attention and my and the care that you're all offering thank you so much for giving me this gift thank you and for being here all together it's really great i love you all thank you ross we really appreciated sharing your process and uh cheryl you didn't get to say much but if you weren't here it wouldn't have been the same <laughs> we really need you here we really appreciate you getting up so early and taking the time to join us because uh, we love you Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Rose. Bye. Thank you, Rose. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone.